Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about which SE you should buy first. Now, admittedly, I don't have the largest SE collection, but I think I have some of the most pivotal and some of the most well-loved, you know, most relied upon SEs in the collection, and they all look pretty similar. We do not have the 5 here, but the 5 also is a, a little bit of a different blade, so I thought these were all pretty much the kind of SE benchmark for how they make their knives. And so today we are going to be taking a look at the SE6, SE4, SE3, and Azula and talking about which one you should get first if you can only buy one and where to go from there. So without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more Alaskan content just like this. Okay, let's jump right into it. Okay, so for me, Though this is a pretty hard decision, I would say if I was left to, or if it came down to only choosing one single SE to buy, it would have to be the SE6. And the reason why that is, is I think that the SE6 is the best culmination of the lot. I think that it is the most capable and most well-rounded of all these knives. Now, don't get me wrong, I've had my SE3 especially for many years, and I've put a lot of good work through it. So this isn't to say that, you know, one of these SEs is complete garbage, but the fact is that the SE6 is a blade that you can put a lot of work through and that most importantly, you can do a lot of tasks with. That makes the SE6 inherently a very versatile and very user focused tool, something that will be able to fit into many different roles and do many different tasks. Now, with that said, the funny part is the next one that I would probably recommend is either going to be the Azula or the 3. Now the 3 is probably the one that I like the most and for kind of an opposite reason of the SE6. So the SE6 is a very thick, or maybe not very, but reasonably thick, reasonably chunky, and very capable general purpose knife. And the SE3 is actually almost kind of the opposite. Now it still is an SE, so it is very durable, and it is very, it's very durable and very capable of doing many different tasks. So the SE3 is by no means a lightweight, but if you notice, even in comparison to something like the SE4, which is not actually that much bigger, the blade thickness is substantially more on the SE4, on the SE6, and believe it or not, the SE Azula also has a thicker uh, stock on it. So the SE3 is kind of the odd man out for the SE lineup. It is certainly the thinnest in blade thickness, but what that allows you to do with the SE3, unlike every other SE in the collection, is it allows you to have a very fine, very nimble, and a blade overall that is very good at slicing and doing delicate tasks. This is actually, and was for many years, one of my preferred skinning knives because it was so thin, it was easy to have a very sharp blade and also a very, a blade that didn't really have a lot of drag or resistance because it was so thin. So the SC3 is under I think right around a tenth of an inch thick. It is very, very thin, but it is very slicey, and that's what I really like about it. So if I had to choose a second SE for the collection, I would probably say run the SE6 first because it's going to be the most versatile, most well-rounded, but the SE3 is going to be the second pick for me because it is also very capable and it is in its own right a very good blade at fine tasks and at doing delicate operations. And realistically, it pairs pretty well with something like an SE6, so if you wanted to run a companion knife or if you found yourself in a situation, a lot of people might say, oh, grab the SE Azula. But I would actually recommend grabbing the SC3 for a couple of reasons. Like I said, it's thinner, but also unlike the SC Azula, where it actually does have a pretty good handle, the SC3 has a bigger handle still. You can also choke up on it, unlike the Azula. So you get a little bit better ability to do fine tasks with a full grip. You also get a little bit better handle, in my opinion, than the SC Azula too. But, um, Overall, the SE3 would be my next step up, or my next step if I was going in the SE lineup. 
So those are my top two. Those are what I would recommend to buy first. Now let's talk about the SC4 and the SC Azula. Where do they fit into this? So first off with the SC4, now don't get me wrong, I don't regret buying an SC4, and this is the newest to the collection, but it's actually probably my least favorite SC, and that's not just because it's new, uh, but primarily because uh, even when I hold this knife, it's hard to exactly describe, but it has the same handle length as the SC3, and it is actually a very similar knife to the SC3, which is what took me so long to get it. But the thing that I dislike about the SC4 is I feel like it's a very thick knife. And even when you hold it, it feels kind of almost awkwardly heavy. And maybe that's just to me because I'm used to holding the SC3, which is much thinner. But whenever holding the SC4, it feels like a very heavy, very overly robust knife. And it actually has the same thickness as the SC6. But the SC6 actually feels... I wouldn't say lighter, but it feels like the weight is more evenly distributed because it is a bigger blade. With the uh, SE4, with the SE4, it's a much smaller blade and everything is kind of condensed. And by smaller, I don't just mean by pure blade length. It also is a narrower blade. So this SE6 is the same thickness as the SE4, but it's a longer stock of steel or sorry, longer stock of steel and wider stock of steel. So it feels more evenly distributed. Whereas with the SE4, it just feels like a really thick, kind of chunky blade, which being that this is a full flat grind blade, doesn't necessarily lend it too many favors. So, so overall the SE4 just is not my favorite favorite of blades because of the simple fact that it's very thick and I find it to be a little bit too thick for the blade length and the blade size and also I feel like it's just a very heavy knife in hand. Like it's just kind of hard to describe because yes the SC6 is heavier but this just feels heavier. So the SC Azula. This is this, in fairness, is one of my favorite knives. I do actually like a lot of the SC lineup, and the SC Azula is no exception to that. While I do find the Azula 2 to be a little bit expensive, coming in at about $70, it is a pretty good knife. Where this kind of falls in line is if you're looking for something that's a reasonably good companion that you also want a good amount of robustness in because like I said this thing is thicker than the SC3 but that does lend its hand to being more robust and stronger. The nicest part about this uh, neck knife or companion knife whichever you like to put it into is the fact that it does have a pretty good handle for all things being considered you know it is a reasonably small blade but you do get a full grip on this thing. And unlike the SC Azula 1s, the Azula 2s do have a, or do have micarta handles. So when you hold it, it has that extra thickness and it, you do actually feel like you're holding something, which in fairness may sound small, but truly if you do use a lot of neck knives and smaller knives like these, like myself, you'll end up finding that, you know, with these blades, a lot of them either come with very thin scales or no scales at all. And that really leaves an empty feeling in your hand. And it's kind of hard to hold onto a blade for long periods of time when you can't really hold or feel like you're holding onto the blade very securely. So that is the S. Yazula. It is a pretty good blade. Once again, it's probably more of a companion knife. I certainly wouldn't recommend it as a survival kit blade just because it's too small to do anything realistic, but it is certainly durable if you push it into any kind of special circumstances. That being said, getting back to the point, the SC6 and the SC3 are still my top SCs. If I was to buy one today, for sure it'd be the SC6. It's definitely the most capable of the lot, and I think it is the most capable without being excessive. And then the SC3, just because unlike all the other blades, it's very thin, very slicey. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.